In this video we're going to look at ratios. A ratio describes the relationship between two quantities. So for example if we had a ratio of 3 to 1 we would write it like so. So if I had a ratio of 3 to 1 and I had cakes I'd have 3 over here and 1 over here. So it's telling me this side has 3 times as much as this side. We could look at ratios as fractions really. If we looked at these total parts we got 4 parts. So we could say that we've got 3 quarters here and one quarter. So we can see if we've got a ratio of three to one, we've got three quarters and one quarter. In this video, we're gonna look at some of the basics with ratio and then move through to look at some word-based questions. But the general understanding is that you're sharing out or looking at a relationship between two quantities. So let's start off with some basics. We're asked to simplify the following ratios. It's the same as simplifying fractions. If we had, for example, five over 10, as a fraction, we know that we could simplify this by dividing top and bottom by 5 to give us 1 over 2. We can do exactly the same here. I can see that 7 goes into both of these, so I could write the ratio as 1 to 3, simply by dividing both of those by 7. If I look at this one, 3 goes into all of these, so if I divide through by 3, I'm going to have 4 to 5 to 1. So we would say the ratio, or it's in a ratio, 4 to 5 to 1. This one here, 8 goes into all of these, so we could write this now as a ratio of 3 to 1 to 2. All I've done is divided each part by 8. This one, 25 goes into both, so we can divide both parts by 25 to give me a 4 to 1 ratio. This one here, 10 doesn't go into all of the parts, but 5 will, so if we divide through by 5, we're going to have 10 to 5. So it's in a ratio of 10 to 2 to 5. All I've done is split all of those by 5. This one we can divide by 11. So we get 3 to 1 to 2. This one here we can divide by 9. So we'd have 1 to 8 and then we'd have to 2. Uh, 8 will go into this. So we'd have 5 to 1 to 3. So that's simplifying ratios. Same way you simplify fractions. Find the highest common factor and divide through by it. OK, we'll move on. And we will look now at writing ratios in the form 1 to n or n to 1. So if we consider 15 to 8 as a ratio, we want to write this in the form 1 to n. All we need to do is divide through by 15. So we could write this as 1 to 8 over 15. And you can leave this as a decimal if you wish. It's also uh, wise to see if you can simplify these. So 8 over 15, we can't simplify anymore. You might want to simplify it to begin with. But we would write it in the form 1 to n, with n being 8 over 15. This one here, 1 to 77 over 24. And again, if you wanted to write that as a decimal, you could do. Uh, looking at that, we can't divide through by any values. So we would leave it as is. This one right here, we would have this as 1, and then uh, it would be 1 to 13 over four, uh, 34 as a ratio. This one right here, 1 to 64 over 5. So that's writing in the form 1 to n. This way, we've got n to 1. So all we need to do this time is divide through by the number on the right. So this time, we would have 18 over 7 to 1, and this one we would have 32 over 13 to 1. And again, none of those have common factors, so we couldn't simplify. So that's just writing a ratio in the form 1 to n, or n to 1. We're asked to write an equivalent ratio for uh, these ones. Do anything. You're simply unsimplifying, um, if there's such a, a phrase. So we could make this 10 to 30 by multiplying by 10. You could make it as a 2 to 6 by multiplying by 2. You could make it anything you want. You can multiply by 3, 3 to 9. So if we were asked to simplify all of these ratios, these would be an equivalent ratio to 1 third. 4 to 7, we can have 400 to 700. If we wanted, we could double them up, 8 to 14, and so on and so forth. So find an equivalent ratio, which suggests that there's going to be lots of them, and certainly there are. There are infinite numbers that you can find. That was meant to be an arrow. We'll pretend it's an arrow. Um, it's pointing at an.
So just write in an equivalent ratio. Okay, sharing ratios. So what we've got to do now is share £120 in a ratio of 3 to 4 to 5. The way to look at this is see how many total parts we've got. The killer mistake often is when I say to people how many total parts, they say 3. If we think though, we've got 3, 4 and 5. That gives me 12 parts in total. So we've got 12 parts. If we now think about splitting 120, so if we do 120 pounds divided by 12, we can see that each part, so we can say one part is equal to now 10. So if one part is worth 10 pounds, all we've got to do is multiply up. So what we're gonna have is now 30 pounds, and then we're going to have 40 pounds, and then we can have 50 pounds. So I found one part is worth 10 quid. There are 12 parts in total. 120 divided by 12 tells me one part's 10 quid. Therefore, I've got three times 10, four times 10, and five times 10. My pet hate is this as an answer. I really dislike that as an answer because all you're doing is rewriting an equivalent ratio. We want to share. This is physical money. If you were owed 30 quid and someone said you can have 30, it makes no sense at all. So 50 kilograms in a 7 to 2 to 1. 7 plus 2 plus 1, 10 total parts. So 50 kilograms divided by 10 is equal to 5 kilograms. So one part is equal to 5 kg so all we've got to do then is now 7 times by 5 and that's going to give us 35 kilograms we're going to do 2 times 5 which is going to give us now 10 kilograms and then we're going to do 1 times 5 and that's going to give us 5 kilograms now, that's shared out. So the seven part is 35 kilograms, the two part is 10 kilograms, the one part is five kilograms. Just make sure this totals up to with what you started. So quite clearly, that does equal 50 kilograms. If you've come up with this and it equals uh, 60 kilograms, then you know that you've done something wrong. Okay, $45 in a five to three to one ratio, nine total parts, $45 divided by 9 tells me that each part is going to be worth $5. So we can say $5 is one part. So all we need to do then now is 5 times by 5, which is $25. We've got 3 times by 5, which is going to give me $15. And then we've got 1 times by 5, which will give me $5. So if we were to share $45 in a ratio of 5 to 3 to 1, it would be $25, $15, and then $5. And we just check that that adds up to give 45, and it certainly does. £72 in a 1 to 3 to 4 ratio, 8 total parts. So 72 quid divided by 8 tells me that's going to be 9. So each part, so 9 is a part. Each part is 9. So this time we're going to do 1 times 9, which is going to give me 9 quid. We're going to do 3 times 9, which is going to give me 27 quid. And then finally, 4 times by 9, which is going to give me 36 quid. So if we were to share it out in that ratio, making sure we write it in this form, it would be 9 to 27 to 36. Make sure you're keeping the order. This is one part, this is three parts, and this is four parts. And if you add all of those up, they will give you 72. Okay, 2.5 in a 1 to 2 to 2 ratio. Five total parts, 2.5, so 2.5 divided by 5 means that each part is going to be 0.5. So all we would do is 1 times 0.5, which is going to be 0.5. 2 times 0.5, which is going to be 1. And then another one of those. 2 times 0.5, which is going to be 1. So we could write it now as 0.5, 1, and 1. So all we're doing is sharing in a ratio. So if you're asked to share in a ratio, that's all we need to do. Okay, let's move on now, and we'll look at some word-based problems. Some money is shared out in a ratio of 5 to 4 to 3. Jim has £100, Fred has £80, and Bob is given the smallest share. How much does Bob get? 
If I write this as a ratio, what we've got is 5 to 4 to 3. If I put above it what each part is, this is £100, this is £80, and we're trying to find out this value right here. Just consider, five parts is going to be £100, and four parts is £80. One part is going to be equal to £20. So all we need to do is 3 times by 20, which will give us £60. So how much does Bob get? Bob will get 60 quid. One part, that does look like Pat, doesn't it? One part is 20 quid. We do 3 times 20, and in your work insured, so 3 times 20 is going to be the 60 quid. So nice and straightforward. These are the ratios shared out in, and we can see all we've done is multiplied this by 20, this one by 20, and we do the same here. Okay. Some money is shared out. Fred gets twice the amount Sue does. Sue gets one quarter of what Bob gets. Write this as a ratio. Start here with Bob. Now, Sue is going to get a quarter. So what we ideally want is a number. If we're going to write this as integers, as whole numbers, we want this, a number that we can divide by four. So let's start off. And what we'll do, we'll just write Bob. So if we take Bob to have four parts, then Sue will have one quarter. Now, Sue is therefore going to have one. Sue is going to get a quarter of what Bob gets. Now, Fred gets twice the amount Sue does. So what we can write is just here, Fred, twice the amount, two. So the ratio becomes four to one to two in favour of Bob, Sue and Fred. Make sure you're getting these in order. So, for example, if you put Fred and Sue the wrong way around, that will be incorrect. So it's shared in a four to one to two ratio between Bob, Sue and Fred. OK, let's have a look at this one. John and Fred share some cake. John has three apes of a cake and Fred has five apes. Write this as a ratio. So let's just consider 3 over 8, and then we've got 5 over 8. Quite clearly, all we're left with is a 3 to 5 ratio. There are 8 total parts. He has 3 of the 8, and he has 5 of the 8. So ratio is just the numerators of the fractions. 3 to 5. They're shown in a ratio of 3 to 5. OK. Let's have a look at the next one. Which is worth more? The smallest share of £300 when shared in a ratio of 3 to 5 to 7, or 10% of 650 quid. So let's start off with a 300 quid. This is shared in a ratio now of 3 to 5 to 7. That tells me that there are 15 parts. If we do that, each part is going to be worth 20. The smallest share is worth 3. So if we do 3 times by £20, that's going to give me 60 quid. So Sharing £300 in a 3 to 5 to 7 ratio and taking the smallest part is going to give me 60 quid. 10% of 650 quid, simply all we need to do is divide this by uh, 10. So that's going to give me now 65 quid. So we can see that 10% of 650 is going to be greater than the smallest share when 300 pounds is divided in a ratio or shared in a ratio of 3 to 5 to 7. OK, let's move on. The ratio of boys to girls in a class is 3 to 5. There are 30 girls, how many boys are there? So let's write the ratio. 3 to 5, these are boys, these are girls. We know there are 30 girls, so what did we multiply that by to get 30? The answer is 6, so we're going to do exactly the same here and we have 18. So there'd be 18 boys. One way you might want to look at it is 5 parts is equal to 30, meaning 1 part is equal to 6. So 3 lots of 6 is going to be 18. And you might want to show that in your workings. So 3 to 5 ratio, 30 girls, therefore 18 boys. OK. Sand is put in piles in a ratio of 6 to 3 to 1. The middle sized part is 18 kilograms. State the masses of the other two parts. So 6 to 3 to 1. Ratio now, and all we need to do is put our 18 kilograms up here. Three parts is going to be worth 18 kilograms, which means one part is going to be 6 kilograms. We can see if three parts are 18, 18 divided by 3 is 6. So we need to do 6 times 6 to give us this one, which will give us 36 kilograms. 
and then on this one we need to do one times by six which will give us six kilograms so for masses of the other two piles the largest one has a mass of 36 kilograms and the smallest has a mass of six kilograms just view this as an equivalent ratio we've multiplied this by six we need to multiply these by six alternatively you can say three parts is 18 so one part is six okay let's finally look at this one a bar chocolate is 300 grams the ratio of sugar to cocoa to milk is six to three to one find the difference between the amount of sugar and milk in the bar I think that's a little optimistic but never mind so let's have a look uh, 10 parts in total so 300 grams divided by 10 that gives me each part is going to be worth 30 grams so if we look at sugar sugar now what we're going to have is uh, 6 times by 30 grams which is going to be equal to 180 grams if we now look at milk milk let's put that there milk is going to be 1 times by 30 grams which is going to be 30 grams we're asked to find the difference between the amount of sugar and the amount of milk so 180 minus 30 will give us 150 grams and that's our answer so there we go a basic tutorial on ratio beyond that uh, there are some uh, examples where you look at proportion and I'll do a video on that but essentially if you're looking for anything on ratio in GCSE that should see you through